Hey, hello, beautiful, lovely women in the community of Dating with Confidence. I am Raika Yavma, your host, and I am back on another Dating Tip Wednesday. So I am going to quickly go on Facebook so I can share this <coughs> on another page that I have promised to share it. Meanwhile, if you're coming on, say hi and that you're here. I would love to know that you're here and say hi back to you. Um, it is one of those wonderful topics that we're going to be covering today and it's going to be all about what to share or not to share with a man that you are just meeting. Um, this was one of the questions in our community, in our uh, free and private Facebook group, Dating Tips for Savvy Single Ladies. So if you have not joined that group, I strongly recommend you do because you get a lot more, um, kind of like a lot more in touch with me and be able to like um, communicate and get a lot of tips and uh, what to do in dating and uh, join a community of other women who are looking for the same thing. So, um, uh, as you're coming on, don't forget to say hi. And if you are, hi, Leslie. Hi, Kelly. Oh, my God. Hi, Kelly. Kelly's going to be a new member of Irresistible Woman program. And I'm so excited to work with you, Kelly. So, so excited. Um, I want to apologize. Uh, well, not uh, not really apologize, but I want to say I'm, I, uh, I, I do have laryngitis, <clears throat> as you can hear it. And this was pretty much the only thing that I didn't cancel tonight. Uh, because I really am excited about the topic that I'll be sharing and I didn't want the topic to you know I just didn't want to didn't want to um, lose the momentum on it so um, you got to bear with my voice for now and <coughs> sorry I will be coughing and then I'm going to go on voice risk because it's very much needed um, so, uh, oh, I wanted to say that if you are watching this on YouTube, please know that this is not one of those quick tip uh, YouTube videos. This is actually going in depth. So if you really want to find love and you want to get your hands on um, serious content that's going to support you, uh, which is uh, what I teach my clients, then I want you to actually stay on and listen. Um, and uh, yeah, and if you're on YouTube and want to join our group dating tips for savvy single ladies, just go to Facebook and make sure you answer the three questions that we ask at the beginning because we um, this the we want to really keep the group to women that uh, are serious about finding love, but also keep the community a very safe community for everyone. All right, so. I always love to hear from you. Don't hesitate to say hi and let's get started. So this is a thing that I see so often women who uh, go on date, uh, especially at the beginning, um, they do and it really backfires. So I'm going to get a little bit specific on what are some of the things to share and what are some of the things to not share so that you do know um, you know how to navigate that first few dates as you're getting to know the man. Now first and foremost not sharing everything does not make you a liar, does not make you a scammer, does not make you uh, a bad person, does not make you uh, inauthentic or not transparent, right? I really want to make sure that you understand the difference between, you know, what is actually authentic and honest in your dating process and what is not. So if he asks you a question that, um, you know, like, have you been married before, right? Uh, on your first date and you say no but you have been well that's being inauthentic and not being transparent because you're afraid of losing him then you you know you're not telling him the truth or I see this with women time and again or men but I'm talking to women so um, my goal is to help you is that many of you have a hard time so you kind of can beat around the bushes and you don't tell him when he's actually asking you because you're afraid that you're too old or you're too young or whatever it is, whatever belief that's going on in your mind is causing you to 
show up and be proud of who you are and trust that who you are and what you are bringing to the table is 100% what wonderful about you right and this is where a lot of women miss the kind of like that really delicate part of what to say and what not to say on a first date so just making sure that i put put you out there this is not teaching you a trick this is not teaching you as you know like um go and say this his attention i want uh, and i'm very i'm a stickler with my clients we show up as irresistible women that means the irresistible woman shows up in her authentic self in her unique irresistible self and um but we make decisions we are at choice we don't just um you know um without thinking um say stuff or do do things we very much take a moment to make decisions so I just wanted to put that out there so that it's really clear to you what kind of sharing we are talking about here. Okay, so this is the thing that you really, really need to understand. When you go on those first few dates, it is 100% your responsibility to show up to the date as a woman who um, is really not only clear about who she is, not like this fake confidence of like, I deserve better, I'm better, but then deep down, deep inside, you're thinking, um, am I ever gonna find love? Is this ever gonna happen? Men don't love me, men leave me, you know, maybe I'm too much, maybe I'm too little, you know, all this kind of stuff that we tell ourselves, you know. And the more successful and the more educated we are, we have the tendency to actually be more in that space of, I'm too good for them, there's no man good for me, or, you know, based on your experience, based on what you have experienced, uh, in your love life, you start making those decisions uh, about what is or is not out there that is really biting you uh, badly and not allowing you to find love with the right man for you. So really keep in mind that when you go on that first date, it is so important that you are clear about who you are, right? And, um, and what do you want from a relationship? So while I teach my clients to really, you know, use their five non-negotiables that we have worked on as the navigation process of their love life, I also want you to know that when you are starting the process of dating and getting to know a man, and this goes not just for men, for anyone that you are getting to know, right? They need to earn your trust to get access to certain information, right? They need to earn your trust, this again, to get access to certain information. So we just don't go out there and like bleh, just say everything, right? Because we want to put it on the table. We want to be honest. We want to like make sure, you know, he knows it. We're not lying and like he knows what he's getting to. And most importantly, what do we do? We don't we have the idea, like how many of you here say that you don't wanna waste your time, right? Well, that idea of I don't wanna waste my time, when it's done in, a, in an inefficient way, which 90% of single women are doing, I guarantee you this, because I've done this work for 10 years, and I've worked with thousands of women over the 10 years that I've been doing this work, is that 90% of you have the idea that I don't want to waste my time means I'm going to go check, 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 check. I'm going to have certain conversations right away, right, to get to know him because I want to know what's going on and I don't want to waste my time. And in that, we either overshare or step, you know, into asking questions that doesn't allow for him to kind of take a beat and be able to express himself in a in a more comfortable way right so this is really really important I want to say hi and i want to go to the group um so that i can actually see your uh comments in real life because sometimes i miss it on my laptop okay so here is um the thing when you go on a so knowing that they need to earn your trust is a two-way thing this is not just 
for men. This is also for you as a woman. You also have to earn their trust, right? So the best thing that you can do on the first few dates is to take personal responsibility before you even go on a date to really know who you are, to trust what the process of dating looks like, to know what to say, to know how to show up, to know what to wear, to know how to answer certain questions, to have all of that information and then go on a date so that you don't get startled about questions that are going to come your way because you don't know what to say. So that's the personal responsibility part that you really need to take on so that when you go there, you know that you need to earn his trust and he needs to earn your trust. And trust in the first few dates could be something as simple as he feels good around you. He feels safe around you. He's not feeling like you're testing him. Who likes to be tested, right? Who likes to feel that they're coming in your arena and they're being put to like taking this um, exam to see if they're going to pass like, you know, the Raika exam or the Jessica exam or the Patty exam. No, no one likes that. If you don't like a guy testing you, then don't do that to them because this is a two-way Make sure when you go on the, so so what we said, what you're going to really know who, hi Marja, uh, you really got to know who you are and how you are showing up. What And to know all this, like, confidence to show up so that you're not either blurry, blurting things out or asking things not, um, in, in a way that makes him uncomfortable. Number two is you got to make sure before you even know what to share or what not to share, what you do want to share in a very non-verbal way. Hi, Carol. You're very welcome. Um, in a very non-verbal way, so you got to understand, sharing is not just what you share with your mouth. Oh, thank you for the heart, Marge and June. It's not with the heart. It's not with the heart. It's not just with your mouth, but the way you sit there, but the way you show up, your energy, the, the facial expression, right? Your body language. The way that you are sharing with a guy on those first few dates and guess what people fall in love with people like really fall in love we're not talking about oh that person is so good looking or oh that person's so hot we're talking about real grown-up mature love we find our life partners in a successful relationship based on the way they make us feel and we can so many times you um, women have this idea of sharing is what comes out of our mouth and sharing is really has everything to do with the way that you show up from top to bottom right the moment you step in your car or in Lyft or Uber or whatever you date right to the moment that you step in there you sit down you greet him you, the way you sit at the table, all of that is basically sharing who you are and giving him data, just like you are going on a date to collect all that data, right? So um, that's really, uh, really important. You want to really make sure that, you know, you have, uh, you have all of that in mind. So one of the best tips that I can give you is make sure you know first and foremost that when you are going on a date this man that's going to be sitting in front of you has absolutely nothing to do with the man before that cheated on you or did you wrong or was the wrong guy essentially hurt you or he broke your heart he was not it, it didn't work out it was not the best um you know it wasn't the right um kind of um, what you might call it it wasn't the right um, fit for you he wasn't the right match for you that's the word I'm looking for right you really want to understand to put in other words put your baggage outside of the door because when you have that baggage with you you're either going to come from a place of fear or you're gonna you're gonna come from a, from a, from, <laughs> 
from a place of kind of like um, confrontation, right? I call it the boxing glove uh, energy, the, the fight energy, yeah, confrontational energy and the testing energy, all of that. Okay, so what you want to do is the moment you come in, I want you to really learn how to practice softness, right? Like that, um, you know, if if somebody's coming in your house and they're they're a guest, how would you be hospitable to them? How would you um, let them know, you know, how, how would you want them to have a good time? Hi, Tracy, it's so good to see you here. Another irresistible woman, I love it. Um, so yeah, so make sure that you are absolutely in a space with your mind that you just feel soft and kind and without the chatterbox. Now, you are going to tell me, well, Reika, first dates, the first few dates are so nerve wracking, especially the first date. I get you. If I were to go on a date right now and I'm a dating coach and I've been in a relationship like, you know, I, I get it. Like I know all the, you know, tips and rules and process and po policies and whatever it is, the principles, that's the word, all of the principle, I get it. But here's the thing. Even if I wanted to go on a date, I will be nervous. Right? That very first encounter is awkward because we're trying to get to know each other and trying to figure out who is what and what is what and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it is nerve wracking. So know that. Just know um, that it's totally okay to be nervous. It's so understandable. Carol says, yes, I can't find the words sometimes. It's so understandable. And you know what the thing it is that you can share that would be so lovely and so endearing is that authentic, irresistible you. This is something that's going to really make you irresistible to a guy. Talk about the pink elephant in the room. You could just, with a very soft energy, you could say, you know, I have to be honest with you, I am really nervous. And I just felt like if I put it out there, it would be... It'll be out there then I don't have to kind of like go in my head and I really want to be present with you here so here it is here I am nervous and excited to get to know you that's honest right and that's endearing because you're not trying to be somebody else you're being yourself so it's totally okay to be that vulnerable it, the right man will be so glad that you're so real that you're so honest that you are so you, you see this is a thing an irresistible woman knows how to articulate their feelings rather than playing games and this is what my program is teaching my ladies Tracy can you know tell you about that 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 is what we learn constantly about how it is to really oh you're welcome Carol how it is to really um, step into that irresistibility and part of that irresistibility is vulnerability. It is so not sexy to show up with like your, you know, that confrontation or nervous energy that makes you go. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you're soft, but so boring and there's something there's like somebody wants to get in and they can't get in and you've invited them to, to your home by the way you've said please please come in but you're like holding the door and saying I'm not gonna let you in that's what a lot of you are doing and understandably because you have been so hurt before so you're scared okay but when you have tools when you know how to date when you know how to talk to men when you even even if you're in a relationship and you're scared right like you're figuring out is he the right guy what is going on like working to your advantage not advantage but like it's working in alignment with you or not all of that requires this knowledge of knowing what to do so you really need to make sure that you understand vulnerability is part of being an absolute irresistible woman just like I came on and I said I'm sorry um, you know about my voice it is not I'm not at my best I'm sick um, and I'm coughing and I'm coughing in front of you 
And I said that and it's out there and now we can move forward so I can actually talk to you about what I want to teach you rather than constantly thinking, well, what are they going to think? Can they even understand what I'm saying? Oh my God, they're going to think how unprofessional I am. Why am I sounding like a, you know, like a, a rooster? Like what is going on with her? Like, did she smoke? Da, 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 da. And going into my head, thinking about what you're going to think about me, right? Rather than just putting it out there, it's done with, all right, let's move forward right okay so that's that is tip number um three right so reviewing it again number one was really knowing that um what you are walking in right you are really walking in, you first of all you have to sorry number one was taking personal responsibility about the energy that you're bringing to the date because it's going to affect all of your communication skills, your verbal communication, your body language, your facial expression, right? And, and what you're not saying, like when you are in those quiet moments when he is talking. Okay, number two is to really know who you are and what you want and understanding that this is a place where you don't have to give everything or ask for, you know, um, uh, kind of like a lot of intimate questions on those first dates because you both have not earned each other's trust and it takes time to earn each other's trust and dating is a process right okay and the number three was to make sure that if you feel nervous be vulnerable tell him it's totally okay it's much better to say that than not okay hi now is online please 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 say hi i love to know you ladies the more i know you the more i can help you okay now let's go to the um you know uh body language conversations and what you're gonna you know uh what you're gonna share with that so i always tell my clients you know i would love for you to show some skin but you really need to understand that you know, going too conservative and then going like, I've seen like, you know, just too much, like depends on what you, you know what I mean? Like it really depends on what your uh, values are around that. But at, in our program at Irresistible Woman, we actually teach them how to style and what to wear that's gonna flatter them. And I wanna make sure that when you're going on a date, it would be nice to wear something that actually shows your irresistible self, like a color that shows you off. Like maybe black could be your color. I know black looks really good on me. So I wear a lot of black, but I put like jewelry on and accessorize it. So it brings a good vibe and energy to the, you know, to the, um, to where I'm going, right? Like, let's say if I'm going and meeting somebody for the first time, I would definitely, you know, accessorize if I'm wearing black, but I really make sure that my style is communicating the person that I am. I don't just like jump and run, you know, to something that matters to me so much. And I know that your love lives are important to you. Otherwise you wouldn't show up to listen to this live and you wouldn't want to be in this group. Okay, so make sure that your style is communicating who you are. Now, when you're sitting there in your body language, you want to make sure you are sharing this welcoming energy that he, allowing him to actually talk to you. The more you make it comfortable with him, <clears throat> comfortable, sorry, for him to, to talk to you and be be himself, if he knows that you're not testing him, if you are having a good time, again, not too ha 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 laughing and not um, too reserved, like really being the way, you know, to, to kind of build up, warm up with him. I want you to be aware of your body language. So just sitting there, you know, might not be the thing, but you want to like maybe have a little bit of a curve, like bringing your feminine energy in there. He's been with the guys all day right and as a straight man he wants to date a straight woman be that straight woman it's not about you know equality and all of that stuff it's about how do men and women get attracted to each other now some of you this might resonate some of you don't you do what you want i'm giving you these tips it's up to you how, what you want to do but i always make sure that my clients know that you know you really show up with your body in a way i'm not talking about like this but i'm talking about like making sure that there is softness 
in the curves. There's softness in the present so that the guy can feel actually comfortable and not so much on guard with you, especially in the era of hashtag me too and time's up. Good guys, quality guys are very much on guard. They don't know what to do. You think dating is hard for you. It's by far harder for them because they are now they, they don't know what is the right or right wrong thing to do from what on one hand women want chivalrous men but on one hand if they put their hands on your back you don't know who's going to call that you know um, uh, harassment or too much or whatever right so you I really want you to make it comfortable for them but you're not making it comfortable for them to just jump on you and kiss you you're not just going out of, you know, you're not making it comfortable for them to just get physically close to you. That's not what I'm saying. I want you to be classy. I want you to be that irresistible woman, but I want you to not be the person that shows up at your work pretty much. All right. Like step into that softer feminine energy. And for those of you who are in my irresistible woman program, you understand. Um, but I will say this because a lot of you are not in my program and that is feminine energy is not the manly man energy. I mean, <laughs> it's not the girly girl pink and, you know, roses and that kind of stuff. Feminine energy is the yin and yang that every one of us has. So feminine versus masculine energy. Feminine energy is the softness, the nurturing, the kindness, right? Um, the um, taking care of energy of ourselves and of the person that's in front of us. Masculine energy is the energy that is on time. It gets to-do lists done. It is aware of like where my savings are and making sure that everything in my life is you know checked and everything is good. So we need to understand which one of our energies are playing when, especially when we go on those first few dates. Now, last but not least, I want to talk to you about what to share verbally and what not. Do not, do not, I mean, do not go on that first date and talk about how terrible dating is. Do not go on that first date talking about how online dating sucks or you haven't found anyone or it's exhausting you, right? Because if you have those thoughts, you need to get help. You need to go educate yourself. Sign up for my classes or go find a dating coach that resonates with you. But, but stop being the person who still, that's so yesterday, that, that's still nagging about how finding love is so difficult. That is your personal responsibility to learn how to date and how to create your love life. It is something that you have to educate yourself just as much as you educated yourself to become a doctor or lawyer or, um, you know, accountant or somebody who works at Apple or Facebook or whatever it is that your profession is. You took responsibility to get there. You need to do the same thing. So if you go on your first date and talk about how dating sucks and how bad it is, guess what? You're just, what kind of experience are you creating, right? You're creating this very negative experience about the very thing that you're doing in that moment with that guy. Now, let's say this has happened to my clients where the guy actually says, you know, dating is so hard or how do you feel about on you know how's it going for you online you know this has been hard hi sammy um but this is if he does that you should be at a place where dating isn't hard for you and you don't get into that conversation hello from australia it's so good to see you sammy sorry for my voice um <clears throat> so you've got to make sure that um you don't get engaged in the conversation that he brings up around that and you don't get started on that, right? Because the whole point of those first few dates is us showing that what would life be like with us? If you're a negative Nelly and you, or you know, just nagging, nagging, or you're like negative about things, why would anybody want to enter that arena? Why would you want to enter that arena? Right? Why would you want to be in that space? 
If you don't want to do it, they don't want to do it either. So take responsibility to clear all of that stuff out. You should not be dating if you still have the, you know, the residuals of those feelings or if you have never taken care of it. Okay, then let's say he brings it up and he says, you know, like um, dating is hard. You can acknowledge that. You could you can validate his feeling. You could say, wow. I thank you know thank you yeah I, I I can I can you know I, I thank you for telling me you know or I think you know it's good I you know thanks for sharing that with me you know um, I am so excited about creating my love life I'm so excited about um, you know really finding the right match that I'm really focusing on how awesome it is to just meet uh, you know people and um, being in a place where I am you know really creating the possibility of finding the right right match um, and I'm I'm excited to be here to get to know you and you change the conversation right you don't get you don't allow that negativity to, to come in but okay now next is your past you really do not talk about your past relationships especially on the first date okay especially in that first conversation let's say even if your encounter is online you don't want to go ahead and talk about oh my god I just got out of a relationship it's really hard blah 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 that guy's gone you don't need to put that out there you could say if, if he says so tell me what is your you know dating story my dating story is that I'm single right now. I have been single for the past whatever amount of years it is, or you could say I just got out of a relationship about six months ago. I've been working on myself, and here I am talking to you, getting to know you. What about you? That's it. You don't go on and on about how it was sucky and he cheated on you and he took custody of the kids and he screwed you over financially, blah, blah, blah. None of that. Because guess what? You haven't earned first of all he hasn't earned your trust right to um, ask you uh, like to know all that detail he just needs to know that you're single and you're in a headspace you want to communicate that you're in a headspace that you really want to find love because that's what I teach and that's what you should, why you should be in this group or on my Facebook page so you're not messing around you're not playing around you really want to meet the right person that's all you need to do and then you ask the question back at him if he asks you you know, um, tell me about it like how you know um, tell me about like what was your last relationship like then you tell him you know you know my 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 last relationship with you know the guy I don't know you know it was just we we realized that we weren't a match and uh, I mean, of course, you know, like any relationship that ends, there were things that didn't work out. And I've really been focusing on that. And hi, Marcy. I love seeing all of you irresistible women here. Um, and I, I'm i excited to be here. Again, you don't need to go like, oh, my last relationship. Let me tell you about it. And I hope, you know, you go on and on. And then you, and you're kind of basically saying, and I hope you're not that kind of a, jerk or you're not the you know the word that starts with an a which I don't want to put it out there right now right right I really want to make sure that you keep it in a way that you're not bringing your ex as the third wheel in a, in the conversation you want the focus to be on the two of you and that doesn't mean you have to set boundaries with him it means you answer his question but the focus is one he hasn't earned your trust to give him all the details Two, hi, hi, Marcy. And two, you want to make sure that, um, you know, hi, Amanda, uh, that you are in a place where you bring the conversation back to you and really getting to know about him. There will be plenty of time to, to, to have the opportunity to say what has happened to you. And, and that knowing when to talk about that is really important. But the first date or maybe even the second date is not the place, right? Okay, so now um, the next thing is what if a guy asks me, 
um, why are you single? Like, why, you know, why aren't you in a relationship? Well, first of all, for the same reason he is not in a relationship. So this is the simplest answer that I want you to, I, uh, to give them. And uh, Amanda, I wish I could sing your particular song right now, but I am totally hoarse. I don't have a voice. I'm like barely speaking on my <laughs> residual vocal cords right now. So uh, anyway, so um, here is the thing. You will say, um, that's a really good question. You know, up until now, I haven't found the right match and I'm really excited about finding that person or up until now I was really my focus was my career and uh, I, I'm feeling good about that and I'm in a place where I really want to share it with somebody who's who wants to you know who's looking for the same thing who wants to be like looking for ship in life or like somebody who wants to have um, you know uh, a life partner Right. So you just express and right there, you're basically telling him what your goals are. Hello, Amanda B. Oh, my God. I love seeing you, ladies. Um, so that's what you do. You, you basically just totally say the truth. Oh, you sang it in your head. I used to sing this song for Amanda, who's also in our Irresistible Woman program. It was um, it was Amanda. I just met a girl named Amanda. That is so weird to sing like that. I'm sorry. I should, I will sing it for you ladies one day. But anyway, so that is what um, you will say to that. So, uh, you know, I, uh, up until now, hey, up until now, I haven't found the right um, man, the right match, uh, or like my attention has been on raising my kids, my attention has been on my job, my attention has been on taking care of my parents, and now I have space and I'm in a place where I can be uh, with, um, you know, uh, I, I, I'm, I have space for that, I have space for love in my life and I really want that, I want to share my life with someone. And you, you don't turn them down, you don't say something like mean to them or get weirded out, that's a really valid question. Why are you single? Like you probably are thinking the same thing. So don't be about it. You probably are thinking about the same thing about them, right? Because we are mostly in our 30s, 40s, 50s, like late 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, right? So of course we're going to think like, what is their story, right? I want to know their story and you will get there, right? Okay, great. Now, when you go on the date, um, you can you can share about what are your passions, right? You can ask him, you, know, you can ask him cool questions, uh, like, you know, oh, what what makes you get up in the morning? Or um, you could say something like, um, what is the most exciting thing that you have done in the past six months, right? Or what is the, you know, um, what is something that you, um, would really like to experience in the next six months. I mean, there are so many things to ask, or you could say, you know, oh, well, have you always lived in, I'm from San Francisco, so have you always lived in San Francisco? Yes, I have. Awesome, you know, there's, there's so many new places open here, right? So you're basically also telling him that you like to go out. You're teaching him stuff about yourself. Right, rather than wasting your time on past relationships and questioning and all that kind of stuff, so you will you could say something like, "So tell me, what's what are your top three favorite restaurants?" You know, and you could say, "Well, uh, it's da 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 da." And you could say, "Wow, I've been to that place. Like, I love the first one. The second one, I haven't been there. I would love to go experience that." So that's an opening. Like, you're right there. If he wants to go on a second date with you. That's a possibility if, you know, he can pick up on that and he could say, okay, next date, we're going to go there. Or like on our fourth date, we're going to go there because I will remember that, right? He might, he might not do that. I'm not saying that that's an expectation, but you're bringing the conversation into not only getting to know each other, but talking about experiences that you can share with each other. Now, let's say that he um, says uh, something like, like he says, for his passion, uh, he, I'm just going to talk about myself, right? Like he would say for his passion, because I'm an opera singer. Right? I'm a professional opera singer in addition to being, uh, you know, the founder and CEO of Dating with Confidence. 
so you so I would say you know like um, I love opera so let's say the guy says I love opera and I try to you know go and watch an opera uh, at least once or twice every season and you totally don't give a damn about opera right like you don't know anything about it you don't care about it awesome what a great opportunity to actually learn about something new that you don't know about right so in fact when you don't know anything about it that's like a place to delve into the conversation so wow i have never met a person who loves opera you know i have to be honest with you i don't know anything about opera but i guess you're gonna you're gonna be my to-go person now right you just created chemistry right there you just created connection chemistry is something you create chemistry is not something that happens just whoop just happens that is not chemistry that is mostly lust that is mostly attraction but chemistry in a sense that you want to find your life partner is not that it's not that just happens it's something that you have created from creating connection and connection is really what you are talking about when you want to find your life partner all right, so let's say, um, so I gave you all those scenarios. So I gave you what you shouldn't be talking about and what you can be talking about. Now, the cool thing is, um, Kelly, and those of you who are going to be joining Irresistible Woman, we actually have a cheat sheet of 22 conversation starters that you can actually take with yourself <clears throat> to the, <coughs> I'm so sorry, to take with yourself on your dating experience and then ask them, you know, uh, use them for creating, you know, that kind of connection and chemistry. Sammy, I know it's true for you because Sammy, who's actually an irresistible woman, is now with her man, which makes me so excited. We have had, uh, in just the last month, we have Miss um, Sammy who's in a relationship and uh, like dating exclusively and then we have um, uh, a client of mine, Ellie, that I mentioned in in um, in our group, also here in dating tips, that she got engaged, and um, uh, then who else? Uh, we have De Deborah who got married, uh, and then I have Lynn who is going. Um, they are and and she said that she has found the love of her life so uh, four wins in the past just this last month so i am so excited and i want to just say how from the bottom of my heart i'm happy for you because i know that this you really went through this program and you did it did it so take the things that i'm telling you even you know all the stuff that i share with you on facebook in our dating uh, tips tv shows and really put it to work don't ask it julie yes you're right marcy julie is absolutely absolutely and of course coach lisa who's now uh, working as an associate coach for resistible women is getting married next year but julie actually was another win this uh, this in the past month thank you for reminding me um all right so five wins that's awesome so here is the thing i want to leave you with this i want to invite you all who are not in the irresistible woman program and you really want to work with me and get your hands on the a to z of dating like absolutely have a program where you are help throughout the entire process to join the irresistible woman now because our prices are going up we are doubling our prices in a very short time uh, and in fact not only that but that double is going to be doubled again because this program in will never be offered at this price point as it, as it is right now so i will give you access to go and sign up if you if you have any questions take action and get out of your comfort zones and send me a message on facebook and say i've seen and read your irresistible woman program page and i i really need to know i have some questions can we hop on the phone for like 10 minutes so i can ask my questions and make my decision as to joining or not 
this is the time, ladies, to do that because if you want your hands on not only the content but working with me, this is the time to join. And it's super, super, um, you know, I mean, it's like at a really ridiculously um, low amount right now, but I just want to give everybody who want to join before we double the price to join now um, before it is uh, going up. I just shared the link and I will also, for those of you who are watching the replay, I will make sure that the link is in the uh, post as well. Please don't stay in this place of, well, I don't know. Uh, you know, I talked to somebody. Thank you, Marcy. Marcy says it is so worth it. Life lessons, not just dating lessons. And it's true. It is life lessons. And you know what? We have five coaching calls a month right now, three of them with me and two of them with Coach Lisa. And guess what? This program soon is going to not, it's going to go up to five thousand dollars okay that's where we're heading so this program in this in the way that it is right now will never be offered again with me and the associate coaches and the facebook support and the uh, you know uh course content that you will have access to for life so jump on because i uh, you know, I would hate for you to miss it and then come back and and um, look at the prices and be like, dang it, I should have signed up when I could, when it was $97 a month. And now I have to pay $197 a month. And then next thing you know, it's going to be $397 a month. So go and you know, check out and, and really, if finding love for you this year is important, I honestly don't know how many more years you want to wait to realize that you need to know how to date in this day and age. That if it hasn't happened, it's not because dating is hard. It's not because online dating sucks. It's not because um, there are no good men in your area. You know, um, I have clients and I'm not going to name names because I want to make sure that the confidentiality is there until I get permission from them. But I have clients who are in a relationship who are single mothers. I have clients who, um, you know, um, uh, who, are, who are older. You know, my one of my clients who got engaged, she is not old, but she's in her, she's 60, right? I have a client who's 75 who actually moved in with a it is absolutely possible and no none of them settled all of them are saying i can't believe i found this guy i can't believe this guy existed right they because they've learned how to do this so go check out the link and sign up now before you lose chance um sammy says i second marcy brown so many life lessons that have beneficial uh benefited my life my parenting and of course my love life and finding connection i'm very grateful oh you're so sweet i'm very grateful for raika and this course i am so grateful for all of you Ex exactly sammy i just didn't want to you know in, you know and um i just wanted to respect your the confidentiality but yes sammy's a single mom working really hard and she has found a guy that she is just like oh my god I like, this guy is amazing he treats me amazingly he's so nice to my daughter and he has a he has a kid too and they are making it work because there are so many guys out there good guys and just so you know i do have male clients that i work with privately not in my um group programs and they are looking exactly for the same thing you lovely ladies are looking for so this for those of you where when you said this is my year i am going to find love this year i am done please get in touch with me or just go sign up it is like a no-brainer um, and on the on the page it tells you that you have three coaching calls a month we are we have just started the five coaching calls a month so it's not on the sales page so just keep that in mind okay and um and our facebook group is not is not dating tips it's actually our paid membership group which is incredibly active and incredibly informative just just being in that facebook group will teach you so much that uh that is like it's in, in itself it's a course in addition to the irresistible woman 
program. I will see you next week at the same time, five o'clock in the afternoon, and I am excited to come on to teach you another topic. I want to know what your takeaway is, and if you're going on those first few dates and you use these tips, let me know how it went, because I want to definitely know how was it for you. All right, love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.